What's growing on gardeners? It's Saturday, November 20th, and today I'm going to share with all of you what just might be the craziest experiment that I've ever conducted in my garden. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. For those of you that follow my channel, you know that I love to grow citrus trees. There's just something about them that I love and I think a lot of that love has to do with the fact that they ripen during the winter when not much else grows. So when everything is cold and dark and gray, we have these beautiful vibrant citrus trees waking up they stay evergreen and they give you some of the most delicious unique and fragrant fruits anywhere on earth now as much as i love growing citrus i live in zone 8a and most citrus are zone 9 and zone 10 trees so it's just far too cold to grow them and while i have a cold hardy red lime growing right over here loaded with fruit and i have this beautiful moro blood orange here I have no chance of growing these in ground because it's just too cold. I try not to let the fact that I live in zone 8A and it's just too cold to grow citrus in ground in most cases get me down. And that's why I have these container citrus. I have these beautiful variegated pink lemons right here. They're just beautiful. I have a very not hardy key lime back here that has just loaded me up with more limes than I know what to do with. And they're all intermixed with these coffee plants. But the problem is while I have these citrus growing in containers, I can only maintain and overwinter so many containers because it's really a lot of work. And because it's so much work, I would have to stop here if I weren't a big risk taker. Enter the cold hardy Owari Satsuma. The Owari Satsuma is probably the most cold hardy high quality, almost seedless citrus that you can buy. It is of commercial quality and it can survive cold down to as chilly as 15 degrees Fahrenheit when fully established. Thanks to the cold hardy Owari Satsuma, growing citrus in zone 8A is actually possible. And this has been in the ground for three years. Just look at this baby. It is absolutely thriving. And while there is some risk to it taking some damage on the coldest night or two a year here in zone 8A, if you simply wrap them in incandescent Christmas lights, like you see right here, then you turn them on and then you throw a plant jacket over them, that will give them the five to 10 degrees of protection necessary on those super cold nights to keep it alive. So thanks to just a little bit of ingenuity like that, it makes it possible for me to grow at least one variety of good quality citrus in ground in zone 8A, and you can too. So I should be really happy that I can grow this one citrus tree here, right? No, nah, I don't think so. If you think that I'm going to be satisfied with growing only one variety of good quality cold hardy citrus in ground, you don't know me at all. I'm a zone pusher and I really like trying to accomplish things and trying to push the limits of what I can do. That's why I have this not cold hardy Lila avocado in ground. Sure, it is one of the most cold hardy avocados in existence, but it's still a zone 9A tree. It can only survive when fully established to around 20 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Yeah, there are some legends that it can take temperatures in the teens for a couple hours here and there, but realistically, it's not going to survive long term in zone eight. But I protect it using this hoop house that I build around it. I throw on the Christmas lights, I throw on the plant jackets, I use the warmth of my house to add a few degrees, and it is thriving. It will be going on its fourth season soon in ground. Then, right over here, I have a Meyer lemon, another solidly zone 9A tree. It's on its second season. It's going into its third winter. It's absolutely thriving. It has fruits forming all over the bottom and they are starting to turn a light yellow. So I will be able to harvest them soon as well. So here I am in my zone 8A with an avocado and a Meyer lemon in ground pushing the limits. But you know what? That is still not enough. That is not big enough for me. And I'm going to go harder than I've ever gone before. And I can't wait to show you the cool thing that I have growing on in the back of my yard. 
Last winter, I made a video for you showing you the importance of finding microclimates in your yard. A microclimate is a small area of an overall larger space that behaves differently climactically than the overall surrounding area. Microclimates can be places that are cooler than normal or warmer than normal. Here, we need to find the locations in our yard that are warmer than the general ambient surrounding area. Now, for those of you that don't know, the warmest area of a yard, generally speaking, in the northern hemisphere is going to be right up against the south wall of your house. And that is because in the northern hemisphere, the sun tracks along the south wall of your house all day and your house is an amazing radiative heat source. It absorbs that solar energy all day and it radiates that energy back out throughout the evening so any plants planted along the south wall of your house will stay unusually warm and it will also protect against the cold north wind which is the coldest air that comes in in the northern hemisphere in the southern hemisphere that is all reversed you want to plant your least cold tolerant plants up against the north wall of your house to protect it against the, the cold south wind that comes from antarctica now that avocado tree that satsuma tree that meyer lemon tree they were all planted along the south wall of my house. That's why they're thriving and doing so well. It's unusually warm there. But the south wall of my house is only so large. So I needed to find other beneficial microclimates in my yard to provide warmth since I ran out of room to plant along my south wall. And that's when I went to this back area of my yard right here. What I did was on mornings when it was cold and clear and frosty and my lawn was completely frosted over, I went outside and I looked for areas where frost did not form. And what I found was because of the canopy of these pine trees over in this back corner, it could get down to be 24, 25 degrees Fahrenheit in my yard and my whole lawn would be under a hard frost. But in this back corner right here, there would be no frost because this, this canopy of trees would protect the cold air from settling down there. The other thing is I actually have a small swamp, a little creek that is about 500 feet beyond my house. So this whole area, it slopes down. So the cold air drains away into that swamp. So this right here is a little area that's slightly warmer and resistant to frost. So this is the ideal place, aside from the south wall of my house, to plant cold sensitive vegetation. So what I've done is I've exploited this potentially slightly warmer, lower frost microclimate back here to put some more, more adventurous uh, citrus trees in ground. And I have three different varieties of citrus trees that I have planted back here. Now all of these citrus trees, all three of these, and my satsuma, the owari that I showed you back by my house, they are all grafted onto trifoliate rootstock uh, by a man named Stan McKenzie from McKenzie Farms in Scranton, South Carolina. Uh, he seed grows a hybrid trifoliate rootstock and trifoliate will permanently dwarf your trees and uh, trifoliate is a deciduous citrus so they get very dormant in the winter. So if you live in a cold climate like me, it is imperative that you get your trees grafted onto a trifoliate rootstock because it will make them more cold hardy and keep them permanently small. They'll only get to be about five to six feet tall. So you will easily be able to put Christmas lights, incandescent lights, and some kind of cover over them to keep them warm on the coldest nights because true citrus trees get way too big to cover. So make sure you get that trifoliate dwarfed grafted tree. Now, this variety right here is a variety called Brown Select Satsuma. And Brown Select is very similar to Owari in terms of cold hardiness, and it ripens about two to three weeks earlier. So I've always wanted one of these to extend my citrus tree and get, uh, to, to extend my citrus season and get citrus even earlier in the year. So between this uh, Brown Select and my Owari, I'll get super cold hardiness and I'll be harvesting Satsumas for one to two months, which is just fantastic. Now this is one of the easier ones to grow. This one is going to be a little bit harder. This is a Maywa kumquat. 
and a Maywa kumquat is hardy to about the upper teens when fully established. Uh, they're very tender when they're young like this, so I will need a good bit of protection. However, it should do well most winters once fully established. Now again, I live in zone 8A, not 8B, so some of the worst winters here will be killing winters for this tree. So that's why I will need to protect it at some time, and I needed to plant it in this microclimate to give it every single advantage that I could. But this is going to be more of a challenge than the brown select satsuma next to me. Now I want to take you over to my greatest challenge. This is a Caracara, which is a mutated Washington navel orange. It's a red navel orange. And this may be one of my favorite pieces of citrus that I've ever had. The flavor is just amazing. They're delicious. They're virtually seedless. Everything about this tree is wonderful, except it is not zone 8A hardy. This is a 9A tree. So while it is hardier than most varieties of citrus and it can briefly take temperatures in the lower 20s, there's no way this could take a 12 degree freeze, which we are liable to get here. So I need to come up with a way to give this about 10 degrees of protection on our worst winters in order to keep it alive. Live. And I will show you how to do that on a later video because I have a bright idea in my mind that I'm going to use to make these trees permanently secure in this location so even on our worst winters they will thrive. So I wanted to take this time and introduce you to this new cold hardy citrus experiment that I'm going to be conducting for in-ground citrus in zone 8a and if all of this goes well here in zone 8a Wilmington area North Carolina I will have an Awari Satsuma, a Brown Select Satsuma, a Meyer Lemon, a Maywa Kumquat and a Caracara Naval Orange all growing in ground in zone 8a taking our potentially brutal winters along with an avocado tree as well so i think that would set me apart from a lot of what people are growing in this zone and i say that jokingly because almost no one in this area is growing this type of vegetation so if i can do this and i can make this work this will be a great tutorial to follow along if you live in zone 8a or 8b because there are huge swaths of the south in the United States that are some type of zone 8A where people are not aware that they can grow plants like this. So this will be a great resource because if I can figure this out, you can figure this out as well. So I invite you all to follow along with this experiment because it's going to be a fun ride. So everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or you found it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we upload more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden, they are all linked down in my Amazon storefront in the video description, so check that out. While you're there, check out my spread shop for custom-made merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Look at this boy. Look at him. What a life. This is unbelievable. Look at him. Oh, there he is. There's the Dale. He's in his pajamas on his lounge chair, wrapped in a blanket. He looks so comfortable. <laughs> Look how comfy he is. He's so turd. He's so turd. He's had a long day of not doing anything. <laughs> Good night, Dale. Good night.